The day you stop learning is the day you start dying. And I'm so excited for what we're about to learn today. This has been Jury Game Changers, where we capture success from different perspectives. We delve into the minds of people with celebrated brands and careers who've been able to turn their dreams into reality and their ideas into lucrative empires. I'm your host, Shay Banigbe, and you're welcome to the show. See you when I get back. <music> Welcome back to the show, and yes, you're about to meet our game changer. He's someone that I think is really special. He's the founder and CEO of Wild Fusion, one of Africa's foremost digital advertising companies. It's the first firm in Nigeria to become a certified Google AdWords partner with footprints in Ghana and Kenya. Wild Fusion has a staff strength of over 60 people, and the training arm of the business has trained over 3,000 people. In 2013, Forbes magazine named Abbas Idarisit among 10 African internet millionaires to watch. Mm. It's a pleasure to have on our set Abbas Idarisit. How are you today? You're clapping for yourself. I like that. I like that. I like no, I'm that. I'm clapping for you. No, for you. no, it's you. <laughs> Breathe in, take it in, take it all in. It's you. You're a big Thank deal. You. Thank How you. are you? Very well, very well. Okay. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. And it's great, great to have you great, on our great, set today. Great, great, great. Yes, so you studied information systems and management in the London School of Economics. Right. Why did it have to be an Ivy League school? An Ivy League school? Um, Was it you or your parents? Why? Why London School of Economics? Most destiny. people go there for their master's. You went there for your first degree. Why? Destiny, destiny. And my master's was at uh, Manchester Business I saw School. I yeah. Uh, an MBA. Mm -hmm. um, very interesting experience. Okay, yeah. so is there any particular reason why you went for to an Ivy League school for your first degree? No, not no no reason. No okay, reason. You, yeah. it just so happened that way. It just happened, and destiny, I'll say. You returned from school with a zeal to transform the technology space for small business. Well, businesses basically how they were using the internet to promote their business and all of that. How did you think, I mean, obviously you, I mean, during your dissertation and your study, you, you got that passion, you saw the possibilities and the value the internet could bring to small businesses and large businesses in Nigeria, and you came back armed saying, I'm going to change something. Why did you think a Calabar boy could come <laughs> into Nigeria with the 180 million people and you thought you could change? What, what, what made you think you could cause that change? So it's just, it's just simple. It's just the Nigerian in me. So okay. the same thing with every single Nigerian. We all believe we can, you know, change the world around us. We're very ambitious. We're very passionate. We can get in somewhere and, you know, yes, the Nigerian is there. Um, it's just that sense of um, purpose, just that sense of, I can't, Nigerian they take class. You just have to go out there and get, roll up your sleeves and get things done. Um, so during my um, project, I got to do a lot of research and I realized that it's so critical. Technology can help companies leapfrog so many challenges. Um, as a small business or as a business in this country, you're dealing with so many problems, um, from infrastructural problems to a huge number of problems. And technology can actually help in reducing some of the challenges you're facing, especially from a communication standpoint. And if you're in the service industry, then you can't do without technology. Yes, um, so that was very critical and, um, and also very important that I come back. First of all, use technology to build my business, then also show others how to, to leverage okay. tech. And roll up your sleeves you did, and then you came in contact with... However, you went about for a year and it didn't... God. <laughs> business didn't exactly pick up and then you, you met Baby M, the, the company, right. the company right. that was making about $1,000 monthly. Right. And you, the, the business took a risk you know, to adopt what you were proposing. That's the whole advertising internet digital thing. Marketing. And you introduced the digital marketing and you took revenue from $1,000 to $100,000 and even became a Google case study, uh, you know, and all of right. that. Why didn't you use a large company then? Why was it? Because no large company would listen to me. Um, mm. At that point in time, being very ambitious, I went to all the large companies okay. and um, I realized sometimes you dress properly, you take your presentation, and because they didn't understand what you were talking about, um, you had to, I had to go from companies to companies. Um, for months, for weeks, I mean, days became weeks and weeks became months and nobody was listening. At some point, I started presenting to receptionists because oh they were the I only people, they were the only people that would listen, listen. and because they don't get to, nobody presents to them, so. <laughs> so, um, 
So yes, that happened and um, it was very difficult. So it's a lot easier to talk to a much smaller business and they will were, were listen. Um, we're talking of 2008, 2009. This was pre-Instagram. This was pre-Facebook, um, um, pre-WhatsApp or, yeah. or, or um, Twitter today. So you can imagine these were the dark ages. I mean, the social media platform then was High Five. That was so popular. Wow. So um, trying to sell digital marketing. digital marketing was a tough one. I think, it, I, think I was a bit too early um, at that time. Um, but I'm very excited that I stuck to it and I, yeah. and um, it all came oh, up right. Uh, yeah, I, you know, you say something very important that it was a bit too early, but you reaped the benefits of starting a bit too early. What, ha what, what has that done for you, for, for you now? Because you started a bit too early. What has that done for you? So, so to, to start a bit too early, sometimes your product or your service might not be right for the market yet. Might, might be too early for the market. Um, if you have the tenacity to hang in there till... Um, there is a market product fit, then absolutely, why not? But if you don't have, you might just want to be um, a bit timely with launching your service or your product. Um, so yes, it's done a good thing, a lot of things for us. Um, so many things I was learning as I was going. Um, one of the reasons why we had to set up a training center was because nobody had experience in digital marketing. Mm. So who am I going to hire from? Like mm. nobody has any experience. Wow. So um, when you are in that kind of space as a pioneer and as a leader you just have to um literally build the foundation from mm. from from bottom up and then other people come to build on what you've you the foundation you've laid i know so if baby m didn't accept your offer what would have been the next thing i don't know to be honest <laughs> you know um so it was a very good thing because she listened and um i said to her Mrs. Funke, and I said, listen, if this doesn't work for you, I give you your money back. Mm. And um, that was the, the money back guarantee was the... Was, was the catch. Was the catch. So she said, okay, that's risk-free, so go do it. I was so excited, and I said, listen, you know, I have something I can... Someone at least finally believes in me. It's not about yeah, the money. Yeah. At least someone believes in what you've been saying for, yeah. for months. So I went out and I did put my body, soul, spirit... Amazing. When we get back, we'll still be speaking with Abbasi Darasit. See you in a minute. Welcome back to the show. And yes, we are still speaking with the number one man in digital marketing in Nigeria. Yes, he's a big deal. Don't forget to drop your questions, feedback, and comment on our social media pages at The BWG Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You will be seeing me in your office after this meeting, sir. <laughs> yes, everybody needs you. Okay. You know, um, would you recommend even the smallest SMEs, you know, to hire firms like yours, maybe not firms like, but a digital marketing company to, you know, to render digital marketing services to them? Like, how, how big does the company grow to then require your service? Um, to, be, to be honest, um, the digital has been democratized. So mm -hmm. that means um, if you're very passionate at what you do, you would be able to learn a skill or two um, to be able to take advantage of the possibilities. Even the so-called platforms like the Twitter, the Instagram, and Facebook, they've broken down and made less complex um, the task of promoting your post product, or promoting yeah. your product or service. So I would recommend or I would advise SMEs because it's tough to build a business. And if having to learn one or two things will save you money, I would suggest SMEs go down that route. So where they say, okay, you know what, let me figure out how do I push this on Instagram? Take out some time, learn how to do it. The same way you've learned how to keep your books, the same way you've learned how to, um, 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 the same way you've learned how to keep your books, the same way you've learned how to hire or learn one or two skills, then learn how to use digital to promote your business. Um, we've seen a lot of them come to the training to learn how to do this. Okay. And they've saved money over time because that money you would have used to hire people okay. to do it for you, they've been able to save that. The much bigger entities have more complex um, requirements for digital. So, um, so we are best suited for oh. businesses like right. that. Right. Yeah. You know, I was going to that. I was about to tell you from my research. I, 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 I'm seeing the multinationals. All the big companies are, well, most of them are your clients. So is it still about the SMEs, Abbas? Because it's seeming like you've moved, though. <laughs> should have seen all these questions. But. Yeah, because, you know, because 
look reading your story you know you were really passionate okay well then most people like you said it's been simplified so would you say now companies like yours are better suited i think you've already actually said so better suited for the multinationals and the large companies and then the smaller companies should go figure it out themselves no what i'm saying is it depends on your business model okay. if i'm if i want to serve a small business i will design the business model differently but the way our model has been designed um the quality of talent you hire to drive this um the experience of this talent the how much they how much you get to pay this talent and how much it costs you to roll out your service um, you know very well that you can't put that burden on a small business. Mm. So the model is designed to, 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 to better support much bigger brands and, mm -hmm. and, and um, much bigger entities. But I love what you said, how that your training school, you know, would assist the average entrepreneur, SME person, to at least get the needed knowledge and school. You, you lead a team of over 60 people. Hmm. What are the challenges with that? You, I mean, human beings are... Um, it's not very easy leading um, because people come from diverse background, um, orientation, lifestyle. You just have to be able to ensure that you are you're, you're very focused, you know where you're going, and um, you're leading people properly. Um, so there are a number of challenges. First of all, you need to find the right set of people to hire to join the team. And in a market where, I mean, at, I mean, a few years ago, no university actually offered practical digital marketing mm. course. So a lot of the graduates were not suited for, for, the for the role. So you have to train people, you have to attract them in, train them, retain them. And, 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 and a lot of people, obviously people have to move yeah. on. Yeah. Um, so yes, these are some of the challenges that yeah. are out there. And then also you have, when we, we have very high standards in terms of quality of service. Okay. Also finding people who share the same um, culture and mm -hmm. mindset and, um, and who are so, who are, so, finding people who are also passionate about delivering quality service. It's mm -hmm. quite difficult in an environment or in a society where high quality, it's not, um, where high quality service it's not rampant, common you know, it's not very common. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to find like-minded people, you know, mm -hmm. people that would frown at this, you know, and um, people that aim very high, that are ambitious, that are looking at breaking and pushing the boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, so that has been some of the key challenges. And then when you don't find them, retaining them um, now becomes another challenge. So yeah. you have to get that fixed. Um, and also at the end of the day, ensure that the service you're delivering to your client okay. remains exceptional over years not doesn't go up and down Maybe. yeah okay so from reading, reading your profile and researching you it doesn't seem you had much you know work experience before starting your company has that affected things much or you've had to just hurriedly learn stuff how's that been for you so i've always been the learning type always reading read my way through problems like <laughs> read crack it right read fix it and move on okay. um so yes i had i did never had a lot of experience before starting. Um, I worked for a consulting firm, worked for a media company very briefly okay. um, before I went went up to start um, an IT consulting firm. So there are obviously a lot of challenges that I could have leapfrogged if I had certain experiences. But also, passion is very important because with passion, dedication, and commitment, mm -hmm. um, you would find out that you would be able to surmount yeah, the problems as they come. You figure it out. And I also think. Um, also being in the service industry where what you're offering is not tangible um, also what is a good thing because if I had to go into maybe some real sector where there is a lot of where there is massive capital outlay it's probably I would have lost a lot of money okay, you know because yeah. so you will so be spending very, yeah. if it was capital intensive yeah. it would have been very um, yeah. maybe not maybe disastrous you know I know so, what you mean I know so, so, you, so um, you've made less expensive mistakes exactly That's less expensive mistakes so it's very important that you get a, if you're starting out very important that you get as much experience as possible oh, if you can okay. um, study and learn ask questions ask mentors um, get mentors if you can so, so what I hear you saying is if you could turn back the hands of time you'd have probably gotten a bit more experience working before jumping out I would have looked for mentors I would have you know, worked with mentors. So a, lot, a lot of, yeah. Okay, I hear you. Thank you so much, Abbas. Thank it's been great much. chatting with you. I like what you said about mentors. I think that's one key thing that I think is 
sort of ignored to an extent in our society. And I'm personally quite passionate about that. And I like that you you emphasize that as well. Thank you so much. It's been great chatting with Abbas. And when we return, we'll be meeting our corporate game changer. And he'll be having a game after that with our corporate game changer. So don't worry. He'll be back. See you in a bit.